Welcome. So some of you might recognize this. It was a laser I built five, six, seven, eight years ago. I don't even remember anymore. Uh, it's an 80 water. It was an 80 water. It's up around 100 now. But uh, I'm on my second tube. And uh, what I'm doing is a little upgrade here. As time went on, I found that um, I wanted to cut thicker and thicker materials. And what I had installed in terms of mirrors and, uh, and the uh, head uh, wasn't up to the task. So what I did was um, I bought new uh, mirror mounts and head mount. Uh, I bought them off Amazon uh, called Cloud Ray. It's, K, it's still K40 stuff. But um, there's a company called American, American Photonics, and they carry adapters, okay, uh, for this K40 type head. They carry adapters so that you can attach different lenses. And so what I bought was a couple of lenses from American Photonics, um, one of which is this 4-inch focal length lens. And that's the whole purpose of this upgrade is because I want to cut thicker materials and in order to do that I need a longer focal length. Um, so now I got a full four inches and what I had to do was raise all the heads all the way around including the, uh, including the uh, laser tube. It's over here. I don't know if I can get it in camera's view. Uh, but uh, trust me, including the laser tube. You can see I used HDPE, which is a plastic material. I cut it over on my CNC router. I um, stacked them on top to line up all the heads to, to raise the mirrors and the head and the tube far enough above the work surface so that I could fit materials in here that I wanted to cut. Uh, before, uh, the, the head was too low and I could never fit a 4-inch lens in below it. So. Now I've got a little wiggle room. I could probably fit a one inch piece of material and still uh, be able to adjust the head up and down. This table does move, uh, the z-axis does move up and down. Uh, so that's the gist of the uh, change and I'm very happy with the American Photonics uh, heads. Pretty they are, well, let me show you this first. This is the K40 type that came with the, uh, came with the mirror mount here, the head. And American Photonics carries an adapter with these threads, these threads here. Carries an adapter so that you can use a slide tube and this happens to be a 16 millimeter slide tube. See this is fixed. It's a fixed length. And uh, so what I've got in here is an adapter you can't see and below it is a lens, okay, uh, a long tube, 4 inch focal length lens. And uh, his lenses are glued into the Two. You don't have to fuss with them, you don't have to position them, you don't have to do anything. They're glued in. I'm looking for the other lens that I bought. I can't find it. Oh, here it is. This is what a lens looks like. This is a shorter focal length. This is a two and a half inch focal length, which I use a lot, okay, for thinner materials. but. This is pretty much quality. You can see the, uh, maybe you can see the lens in there. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, I see a little reflection there. The lens is uh, glued. It's perfectly centered. They perfectly center it in there and it's glued in there. You don't have to fuss with O-ring spacers or anything else. So that's pretty neat. And this tube here, 16 millimeter, and he's got a whole series of sizes that you can choose from, but this happens to be 16 millimeter, which mates up to this K40 adapter, which is what's in here. 
and uh, this lens is also uh, 16 millimeters, so it makes it pretty easy to swap the lenses around. Um, to set this table up now, well, first off, let me uh, digress here just a little bit, and I'll show you the, the rest of the mod if I can get it in camera view. Um, you can see the tube. I put the tube on standoffs there. The far mirror is on standoffs. This mirror is mounted, but it's spaced. Got some spacers. And of course, I, I told you that the head has spacers. There's a half inch, half inch, and a quarter. So there's an inch and a quarter spacing here. And um, I'll talk about this here in a minute, but uh, I followed the advice of American Photonics. He has a series of videos on his website in terms of alignment. And uh, one thing I never, never even thought about was the, the uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, the, the perpendicular, uh, perpendicularity of the lens to the work surface. Uh, this is perfectly square. Okay, I used the tube that's mounted to square it off, and you can see I used the shim here to get it perfectly square with the table. And uh, these shims, by the way, this is a little, little hint. You can go to Harbor Freight, you can buy, uh, you know, you can, uh, uh, what are these, feeler gauges. You can use feeler gauges for shims because this cheap enough. You can get it for like uh, four dollars uh, with a coupon and you got more shims than you'll ever use in your lifetime. So anyway, uh, this is a shim and it's perfectly square and to align the mirrors American Photonics also has what they call a reverse alignment tool and this is it. Got some batteries to go in here and a cap and this is designed to, re you know, you remove the lens, you push this up into the uh, cavity here, lock it down, and it shoots a red laser around. Of course, you're not going to be firing the um, laser, but uh, it's supposed to shoot a beam out perfect at perfect 90 degrees to this <clears throat> first mirror. Is this... Uh, Mirror, no, this is mirror three. Mirror three, mirror, mirror two, mirror one. They call this mirror three. So anyway, it shoots a laser around and it allows you to uh, align to the axis. And I'm not going to explain that now in here. It's beyond the scope of this video. But if you're interested, go to a site. They're excellent videos. However, having said all that, this reverse alignment tool in my mind regardless of how you put it in a tube okay you rotate it whatever regardless of how you put it in this tube should always produce the same result in other words it shouldn't um, if the if the if the dots off off to the right on on this mirror if it's off to the right on the mirror you take it out, you replace the batteries, you put it back in, the dot should still be off to the right on the mirror. In other words, it should repeat no matter how you put it in because it's a cylinder. Right? It's a round cylinder. It does have a flat machined on it. And I asked them about the flat, and I'll talk to that later. But they said it shouldn't matter, you should be able to put it in any way you want. Well, I found that not to be true. And I'm going to shoot a little video off to the side to uh, uh, describe what the problem is, how I found it, and, uh, and how I identified it. And uh, we'll see uh, how they respond to it. But um, this is either bad or I suspect that the flat was put on here for a reason. This is, I'm just purely, pure speculation. I have a sample of one here, but I think they meant this to be in 
in the hole with the flat facing the rear because most of these heads have a thumb screw on the rear not on the you know on where I have it here coming out of here and I believe that the output laser when they glue it in or whatever the manufacturing process is they probably put it in a machine they line it up to be perfectly perpendicular mark the body and then they machine a flat into it so anyway that's that's what I'm speculating and I'll show you how I tested that on a laser in a different video but uh, I did waste a lot of time on that it, it, it really had me uh, had me, you know, uh, uh, doing a lot of extra work, raising mirrors, lowering mirrors, uh, making new spacers, all kinds of stuff because I couldn't understand why every time I would go and I'd adjust all and I'd get everything perfect and then I'd have to remove the, uh, the tool and I'd come back the next morning, whatever, put fresh batteries in, put it back in and everything had changed. So it really made me crazy for a while. Anyway, let's uh, let's cut apart. Let's see how this thing cu uh, cuts. Okay, I'm back. The uh, compressor stopped, so we're ready to cut and uh, turn my blower on. That's just as loud as the compressor. And uh, I'm using Mach three, and I use a program called Cut Two D to. Uh, make my cut programs and I got my laser this is a 90 watt tube I got it set to around 10 milliamps it might be a little high but and it's uh, set to 25 inches but, uh, a minute so uh, that's the, uh, the speed so we'll start. Absolutely beautiful cut. No flame. No flaming, no uh, catching fire. An absolutely beautiful cut. mentioned once before it's a quarter inch balsa. say it's really a great cut absolutely perfect this machine has never cut this this good before it's got light charring on the edge probably had the power up a little too high but it's perfect very happy with this very very happy so that's the, uh, the gist of this and by the way, this sticking out of here is a uh, a shim. When I went and I leveled the head, I leveled this head when I did the mod, the upgrade, and um, I found it was was off. So I used a, uh, and I've done this before. 
a set of feeler gauges from Harbor Freight. I don't know what they cost, like four or five dollars. A whole set of feeler gauges, and I use feeler gauges as shims. Cheap enough, and it, and it works here. So uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. Like I said, I'm very happy with this. Very, very happy. This is absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. This machine has never cut this uh, this well uh, from the beginning. So. All right. We'll close it off now.